All right. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the government's making progress towards an overhaul of electoral laws with an emphasis on caps on the amount of money candidates can receive and spend. Anthony Albanese has confirmed this is on track, subject to further consultations with a wide cross-section in the parliament. We are consulting very broadly, including with members and representatives of the crossbench and the minor parties as well as across the major parties to see if reform, as proposed by uh, the minister, Minister Farrell, uh, can receive very broad support. Because one of the objectives that we have here is to land reform that stays, not reform that comes and then goes with changes of government. My view has been very clear that there needs to be transparency when it comes to political donations, that there needs to be a stopping to give just one example of the sort of largesse that we saw from Clive Palmer uh, during uh, the last two election campaigns. I don't think Order. it is tenable. I don't think it is tenable at all to have the sort of uh, dollars washing around the system such as occurs in the United States. I think that is unhealthy. I think it undermines our democracy and I think that Though I make no apologies for the fact that we will engage, as I have engaged with the member for Curtin and other crossbenchers at meetings that have been held about these issues. I'll continue to do so. Senator Farrell, uh, as the minister, will continue to make himself available to see if we can indeed entrench, entrench greater support for our democracy. You sense in the Prime Minister's answer there that the government is a little exasperated that some crossbenchers are publicly touting alternatives at a time when it's trying to consult them on electoral reform. The Teals are mostly against capping spending on campaigns. WA Independent Kate Cheney is proposing a different form of control, though. She joined us here in the studio a little earlier. <music> Kate Cheney, welcome back to the studio. Now, all indications are that the government's drawing closer with each day to a bill to update or overhaul electoral laws, uh, even if they don't kick in until after the next election. That looks like being the proposal. We've spoken before on this program about donation caps and spending caps. You only support one of those, donation caps. What is your proposal? Well, I've tried really hard to come up with a model of caps that um, is fair because I know people think that there's too much money in politics. It's really hard to do. So the benefit of, of this mega donor or, or major donor cap is that it's really simple. Um, no individual can donate more than 2% of all the public funding that was contributed in the last election. Now, that works out to be about $1.5 million for the next election. Mm -hmm. um, and you've yeah. done some calculations on the number of individuals using the example of the last election who would not be able to donate in the levels they did. That's How right. Many? So it, last, in the last election, if this had applied, it would have affected four donors only out of 735. Um, but it actually would have uh, more than halved the amount of money that was being put into the election, into the election through private donors. So it has a disproportionate impact um, but doesn't create a huge regulatory or um, compliance burden for a whole lot of people. You use the word individual. So exactly who does it capture? Only individuals? What of other entities, that is, fundraising organisations? The Liberal Party has mm. a few of those. Of course, the trade unions and the like. Are they captured? So it has a look-through provision. So ultimately, um, it, it goes to an individual or company... Um, but if they are donating through some fundraising mechanism, uh, it, it goes back to the, to the original. So whether you make a donation through the Liberal Party's Cormac Foundation or through Advance Australia or um, through a Climate 200 type model, it goes to the individual making the donation rather than the vehicle that you make it through. OK, so just to pick up on a point you already raised, I think in aggregate terms, the total spend on electioneering under your proposal compared to what was experienced in 2022, it halves it, does it? Yeah, that's right. So it would change it from, in the last election, 200 million to about 80 million. 
Okay. Um, so significant impact because we have this, we have these, you know, individuals making huge donations that have the potential to actually change the outcome of an election. And I think no one really thinks that that's how we should be running our, our elections. All right. So as I mentioned near the beginning, the Electoral Committee, the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters, actually proposed a two-pronged approach, caps on spending and mm -hmm. on donations. What's your position or latest position on spending? Why is that so objectionable? Well, as I've said all the way through, um, spending caps sound great, but the devil is in the detail and they can really have an, the impact of preventing political competition. Um, it's very complicated working out how you make sure spending only happens in the electorate so that uh, an incumbent party member and a challenger spend the same amount. They've got all these party advantages and incumbency advantages, uh, economies of scale, and it's really easy to game it so that an incumbent can massively outspend uh, a challenger if you try and do caps at an electorate level. Is that true in your case, looking at your current circumstances and that you know any proposed changes mm. to electoral law probably wouldn't kick in till after the next election? How would your circumstances be different now than as the challenger that you were yeah. in 2022? I now have many of the incumbency advantages. Um, doesn't mean I think that, they're, that, that, that that's appropriate. We need to make sure that I'm not just pulling the ladder up and saying I'll be fine, but we don't, you know, there'll be no more new challenges. We need our political competition to, to be there and ideas to evolve. Conversely, so, I, you could yeah. argue, or I could put it to you, that there would be competition where you were capped and your would be challenger, be they from the Liberal Party or another independent, as you once were, coming through the ranks. You're both capped on the level playing field at the same spend. Well, in that situation, I would have the benefit of an office and a team and my communications budget where I can send my, my newsletter out, and a new challenger wouldn't have that. But there are limits on that once you enter campaign proper aren't there? You'd have to have spent most of that money before the campaign. There are limits, but um, as I've seen, there are lots of ways of making the most of, of incumbency advantages. So the spending cap, um, I mean, I'm open to government pr presenting something that, that can work fairly, but I haven't seen a model that, that actually can, can work without just embedding the status quo and preventing new challenges from coming through. All right. I think in its deliberations, the government is open to the concept of increasing public funding, that is how much taxpayer money goes above a certain percentage of the vote. Uh, it's currently about $2.90 per vote, isn't it? Would that influence your proposal if it was increased? That is, instead of capping at about $1.5 million, that could go up substantially, couldn't it? Well, I, th I think the bill that I've put forward with crossbench support doesn't have an increase in public funding. Um, and I think there are real problems with that. It, again, embeds the status quo. So it means that the parties who got the most votes in the last election then have a war chest to start with at, at the next election. Um, and it's a way of making uh, you know, taxpayers mm. pay politicians more to, to campaign. Um, but I think it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're open to new competition. So, so I think there are some real challenges with increasing public funding, especially in a cost of living crisis. All right. Just to quickly draw you out on some other extraneous recommendations from the committee, which I stress may or may not be picked up by the government, but enlarging the parliament, both the reps and the territory senators, for or against? Uh, I haven't looked at it in a lot of detail. I've really been focused on, uh, on donation sure. reform. Yeah. All right. And uh, on another issue of the day, you may have noticed, Kate Cheney, that the, an unlikely alliance of the Nationals and the Greens both seem to be supporting a change to competition laws where the courts could order the breakup of Coles and Woolies and the divestiture sale of stores if they abuse their market power. Now, this happens in the UK and elsewhere. Why not appropriate for Australia? So there is no doubt that people are really noticing the cost of living at the moment and grocery prices are higher. And we do have a problem in Australia with market power and market concentration. You have to be really careful when messing with the rules of competition. So I don't want to see a knee-jerk reaction of the creation of divestiture powers because I think it can really 
um, manipulate or change the way the market looks. In what we way? What would the slowly. adverse consequences be if you did? Well, um, it's, e it's easy to say no one should have more than X percent market share, mm. um, but working out how that, what that actually looks like in reality, which stores do they have to sell, who do they sell them to, there are so many uh, questions. So I think we need to go ahead with the inquiries that are on foot at the moment and take a sober look at our competition policy in a range of areas, not just supermarkets. Uh, airlines, there are other sectors yeah. where we have the same oligopoly problems. Yep, and I do stress it's only an idea. I don't think there's any suggestion the government is necessarily mm. going there. Kate Cheney, uh, thank you for covering all that ground with us. We'll catch you back on again before too long. Thanks, Chris.